Go, let me hear you. You go. No, you do it. You do it. You do it. Sexual problems can have a devastating effect on relationships, which can happen for a myriad a of myriad reasons. A myriad of reasons. Mm. Dr. Jen Mann is here. <laughs> Her book, The Relationship Fix, taps into the root issues to help rebuild communication. Sounds like a press release. Yeah, uh, listen, the bottom line is okay. we're, we're having sex and we're not having sex, and what are we doing wrong, and let's get it right, right? With long-term <laughs> couples, there are certain things I see over and mm -hmm. over again in my practice. You know, one of the first things is we tend to get complacent and not ask for what we want. And I think that what tends to happen is that couples go, okay, we've been together for, you know, 30 years. I know if I do A, B, and C in this order, it's a home run, it's a sure thing, and they just keep doing the same thing. But it's really important as time goes on, we need to increase our sexual skill. We need to really learn new techniques, try new things, do things in a different order. There was a really interesting study of 38,000 long-term couples, and they looked at two groups. Those that rated their sex lives as being as good as it was in the first six months and those that didn't. So those who lie and the others. Yes. <laughs> Steve, what that's what I found say. with the ones. No one tells that, the truth. What they found with the ones, and I'm going to assume they're not lying. Okay. Forgive right. me for a moment. Okay. okay. But what they said is both groups read about new techniques and new things to try. It was the couples that were as happy as the first six months that actually implemented the new things oh, that they that, learned. That's a no brainer. And, yeah. well, I, and, but the overall picture was those that put the time and energy into their relationship and their sex lives had great sex lives. I don't know if people know how to do that. How do you, like you, you say, uh, one of the other mistakes, don't know or ask for what you really want in bed. How do you, how do, you do that, some well, people and, say? And that is such a great, a great mm -hmm. question because a, a girlfriend of mine named Taylor who hosts Wake Up With Taylor on Sirius XM did the greatest interview with Dr. Ruth. And what Dr. Ruth said is if you don't know what you like, you can't expect your partner to know what you like. And you're not, you don't stand a chance that we have to take responsibility for our own sexual pleasure and for communicating it to our partners. Long-term partners, believe it or not, tend to have a harder time they than get, quickie partners. They get self-conscious in a way, which yes. is odd to say, but it is. It's so true because also if you're with someone for a night, you're like, who cares what they think of me? But yeah. when you're with your partner, we're far more afraid of judgment. We're far mm -hmm. more afraid of saying, well, there's this kinky thing I really want to try. And we have these terrible ideas of, oh, I can't say that to my wife. Oh, I can't ask yeah, my husband for that. Yeah, because you're afraid that you know you're going to ruin your relationship yeah. somehow. And, and there needs to be a no-judgment zone in the bedroom. There's also putting yeah. a wife on a pedestal that takes her away from where you were. Completely. Yeah. And we, oh, that's need, topic. we need to break that. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's another topic. Uh, Dr. Ruth, once we asked yeah. her uh, how her sex life was, yeah. and she said, you know, the shoemaker's a wife has no shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love I, it. I cannot say the same uh, for myself. Okay, <laughs> enough, you enough. stop seducing each other, okay? So yes. what does that look like? Because, uh, you know, listen, you got the kids, you got the job, you got the... Yeah, absolutely. I cook dinner. Yeah, there's a, a brilliant woman named Esther Perels who, who once said that we have a misconception that what we possess, we don't need to work for. Right. And I think there's, there's this idea of like, okay, we've made a commitment to be monogamous with each other, so somehow we feel entitled as opposed to we should always be working for it. We should always be doing the things that we did in the beginning, the honeymoon phase, planning the fun date, really listening. Yeah. Wow, what? Oh, she said she likes pink roses. I always thought she liked red. Let me surprise and, her and, and, and do that. And you can that. get lazy with each 100%. other. hundred you know. percent. Dress up and go out okay. and yeah. treat it like a date. Now, I think another so, one yeah. says here is allowing your libido to die. What does that mean? Well, a lot of the time people say, oh, well, I'm X number of years old, fill in mm -hmm. the blank, or I'm under so much stress that, of course, I'm not as hot yeah. for my partner. But it's really important when you find your libido diminishing to look at it. First of all, Go to the doctor, have your hormones checked, look at with your doctor, are there any medications I'm on that are affecting my libido? A lot of people don't realize antidepressants, a lot of hair growth products, um, blood pressure medication, a lot of these things can impact our sex life and our desire for sex. But there sex. are fixes for these things? Like, that's a common one, the blood pressure medicine. There completely, are fixes. and there are a lot of fixes. Also, we stop doing the things that we do in the beginning. I, I've said to so many of my clients, well, okay, at the beginning when you first started dating, what did you do to get ready for a date? Well, I shaved my legs, I got a bikini wax, I would think about the and, last and date we went on. That was the yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. These days, you but, better believe it. But, but we stopped doing that. And that that process gets us in the mood when we're primping and we're planning and all get, that sort get of the stuff. Nice, the nice stuff. Yeah. All right. Um, or, or you, uh, Maria, here's yours. Yeah, yeah. Are you yeah. just plain old don't make room for sex? I, yeah. You don't make room for sex. And so many people yeah. do, especially once kids are in the picture. Mm -hmm. And it's important to 
protect your relationship, whether it is house guests, in-laws, work, whatever it is, kids, those demands, it's really important to have sacred time where you can connect, not just sexually, but emotionally. Because if you're not connecting emotionally, you're less likely to want sex. So it's really important to create that time and also get a lock on your bedroom door. Oh, for if goodness you have sakes. Kids, I yes. can't tell you how many couples I have spoken to where they don't have a lock on the bedroom door. No one's going to have great sex if they're worried about someone barging in. It's gonna, that's right, just that's not going to happen. How many times a week? You know what? That's up for Come debate. On. What, what that's the no rule. There's no rule. What, no, listen, I, I, a study came out that said one time a week. Believe okay. it or not, couples are happiest with one time a week. To me, it's really about the individuals because you have some people who are like, I'm not happy unless it's five times a week. And you have some people who are like, oh, one is, is and, really and pushing the envelope. And there are some people for whom sex is anxiety relief, and that's why they want to have yeah. it all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you find you're compulsive about it mm -hmm. and you need it for anxiety relief, then it's time to get into therapy. You know, you talk about kids. we got some kids here right now. Who are these kids? <laughs> Those are my kids. Those are your kids. Yeah. It works. It surprised yeah. me. I didn't even know they were in here. Yeah. Hello, Hi, kids. Yeah. Yes. Do, do you yeah. get uncomfortable Hello. discussing this with them around? No, you know, on the way in here, I said to my kids, you know, by the way, I just want to let you know I'm going to be talking about sex. And they said, well, of course, don't you always talk about sex? <laughs> They're there pretty no, savvy. They said, what, is, what is mom? mom? What does mommy do? Mommy talks about sex. Yeah. Uh, Jen, yeah, good thanks. to see you. Dr. Jen Mayer, thank you. you. Thank you.